All right, in this video, we're gonna do a solar panel shade test. We're gonna go out there and check this out. First of all, we're gonna turn the solar on and uh, I got the panels off right this second. I'm gonna turn them on, show you how much power the grow watts are currently pulling in. And then we're gonna go out there and cover up partially uh, one of the panels to see what kind of drop we have. And then we're gonna cover up maybe partially on two panels to see what we got, to see what kind of power loss we're gonna have. 4,700. 60 or 70 watts this one got right at 4800 so very similar Let's check out the amps all right the amps 17.2 17.3 amps coming in and 17.5 amps 17.4 amps coming in a little noisy sorry about that with the inverters kicked on, the solar panels charging back my batteries, but about 17 amps coming in on both of them. Let's go ahead and put a little shade out there and see what change we get. All right, right now I've got pretty much full sun coming in on these. So on the shaded side, got 3,500 watts coming in at 12.6, 12.7 amps. And we got 17.8 on the other panels and 5,000 watts coming in. So as you can see, we're losing about 1,500 watts with uh, one partially uh, shaded panel. Basically, I got two inverters. Uh, one's pulling over 5,000 watts, one's pulling in 3,500 in the same exact uh, sun, except for that one box, partially shading one panel. So losing 1.5 uh, kilowatts. I'm gonna see if we can get that whole panel, the entire panel covered up, to see if our power drops off completely from that string. And uh, not sure if it will, but we're gonna go ahead and try to get the whole thing covered up. So basically, as you see now, got the whole panel covered up. Let's go ahead and check it out and see what's going on with the uh, inverter on the right, and then we'll compare it to the one that has nothing blocked on the left. Now it's saying 4,400 on the right and 5,100 on the left. I'm not sure if the boxes fell off. I might have to tape them up there or something. Let's go check it out. And the boxes fell off. Let's go ahead and tape them up there or something. All right, got 4,400, almost 4,500 watts coming on on the one that's covered. And the one that's not, we got 5,100 coming in. Unless the box fell again, as crazy as it sounds, with that whole panel covered up, it pulls more power than when I had it partially covered up. It was pulling 3,500 when it was partially and 4,500 when it's completely covered up. So makes it doesn't make much sense to me. Maybe somehow it's bypassing that panel, you know, because of different diodes and stuff they have in the panels. I'm not sure, but let's go check it out and make sure the boxes actually didn't fall and it will partially cover it up again to see if the power drops back down to 3,500. All right, we're gonna test it out. As you can see with that corner, partial panel coverage, and we're gonna see if the that power goes down or back up. Let's check it out. 4,900 watts coming in, and 5,100 on this side. As you can see, it's almost the same voltage, 4,900 versus 51. 4,900 with the right part of the first panel partially covered. Change the box orientation a little bit, see if that's gonna make a change. So 4,700 watts coming in versus 5,200, 5, So it's a little lower that way with the box going horizontal. Let's go ahead and cover up some more cells on that same row on the bottom and see if it goes even lower. So going horizontal, I lost a couple hundred more watts. So I'm gonna put another box on that bottom, cover up that complete bottom row. See, that makes a real difference. So it seemed to lose a lot more power with the box that's covering the bottom cell than covering the, that entire panel, which, you know, really makes no sense to me. I guess when it, the whole panel's covered, I guess it's a bypass in it because the string inverter is gonna pull the power from the panel that has the least amount of power, and that's the most power you can get from every panel 
in the string. So maybe with that panel pulling some power, that's when it's using. But when it has no power, it's just bypassing it completely, I guess. All right, I went on ahead and covered up a part of another panel right next to it. Let's see what kind of difference that makes when there's two panels that are partially shaded. So that does seem to make a big difference pulling about 4,000 watts on the shaded inverter, you know, with the two panels partially shaded and then the other one's pulling at 5,200. So 1.2 kilowatts less with that very small amount of the panel shaded. Let's go ahead and do a third one. Hey, just to see what happens. So with three panels partially shaded, only pulling in 3,200 watts now versus 5,300 watts on the other string that has just sun. So definitely a big difference when you have several panels partially shaded. So basically with those three panels partially shaded, basically you have a 40% power loss, you know, with very minimal amount of my panels covered. Let's say there's 10% shade and losing 40% of the power which is pretty crazy. So at least what it seems like to me is if you have one panel uh, partially shaded, you're not gonna lose a ton of power. You are gonna lose some, but the other ones you are gonna make up for that. If you have one panel that's completely covered, your, your panels are gonna do really good. You're not gonna lose barely any power at all, which makes no sense to me. And then you have three or, or more. Uh, you have a bunch of panels that have a partial shade then you're gonna lose a ton of power. You lose 40% of power just for those three that are partially shaded. So it was a, a fun little experiment. Uh, what kind of power loss that you guys have whenever you have shade on your panels? Hey, let me know that in the comments below. And if you like this kind of video, hey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and thanks for watching.